Hi everybody, I'm Mike Nelson. Well, one of the most beautiful times of the year is upon us. September into early October in Colorado. Just glorious with all the golden colors of the aspens. This was last year taken by my wife up in Clear Creek County. And this shot I took up at Echo Lake. Just a lovely time of year, oftentimes accompanied by the first snows. Beautiful aspen. I think this year we could have a great display if we don't get any big windy storms. Some of that moisture that we've had earlier on could give us some really nice looking displays. So let's drill down and talk about September weather in Colorado. We can still have severe thunderstorms, but we also can get the first snowfall of the season. Still can get some strong storms, even some hail on the plains but very often our first snows may fall in the next few weeks. Now the wettest September on record was the flood year back in 2013 along the Front Range. Out at DIA we had 5.61 inches of precipitation. Some areas had two or three times that or more. Driest 1944 a trace of precipitation. Back in 2020 we hit 101. That's the hottest day in any September on the 5th. Coldest 17 on the 29th in 1985 and back in 1961 on September 3rd over four inches of snow. That's the earliest snow ever reported in Denver. Now the average temperatures, the warmest September ever was almost a 70 degree average temperature in 19, 2015. 1912, it was about 55 degrees for the average temperature. As far as the highs, 85 degrees on the first of the month dropped to 73 by the 30th. 55 is the low on the first dropping to 44 by the 30th. Talk about snowy Septembers. We can get some pretty good ones. 1971, we had 17 inches of snow pile up during the month. And 1936, 16 and a half. 1959, almost 13 inches. 1895, 11.4. 1985, 8.7. 1995, I remember that one, 7.4. A lot of broken tree branches from that storm. I don't remember 1908. We had 6.5 inches of snow. So our storm threats tend to change a little bit. We can still get the thunderstorms, the lightning, the heavy rain, but we really see the hail and tornado threats drop off. But snow and frost can occur. Here's the outlook 30 day forecast looks warmer than average Colorado and most of the West and we're kind of in between a little drier in the Great Lakes wetter in the southeast, but no real nod either way. Typically September is one of our drier weather months. You may have heard about the El Nino that has been forming out in the Pacific and El Nino is supercharged with uh, the warming that we see around the globe as vast amounts of heat are being released into the atmosphere that was being stored in the ocean. That may change our hurricane forecast for much of the coastal areas and we'll wait and see what this has to do with as far as our weather conditions moving forward deeper into the fall and the winter season. Right now, one thing we are seeing increasing drought as it continues to grow back over southwestern Colorado. No drought still in the Denver area, but uh, oftentimes September is a pretty dry season, so I don't know. We'll see a lot of change on this, especially with that extended forecast. You want to help us measure? How much precipitation we get, you can join COCORAS, the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail and Snow Study. And we will teach you how, with a rain gauge and a hail pad and measuring snow, to be part of 20,000 people worldwide that keep track of the weather with COCORAS. If you'd like to join, it's a lot of fun. www.cocorahs.org. Go cuckoo for COCORAS. Now let's talk about the 90 day forecast. This is the extended taking us deeper into the fall, warmer than average conditions and kind of in between on that precipitation. Again, this is an unprecedentedly strong El Nino that it looks like it's forming and uh, kind of all bets are off the table. We'll see how this all develops and why is it unprecedented because of climate change. All the things that we report in our newscast, whether it be extreme precipitation and flooding, the increase in tropical systems, the heat waves, the droughts, the awful wildfires, the shrinking of the snow and ice, all related to what we expect in a warmer climate due to the increase in carbon dioxide from the burning of fossil fuels. These are where they're measured. 
Barrow, Mauna Loa, American Samoa, the South Pole, to take the whole global concentration of CO2. And the seasonal up and down, you see, that's plant respiration. That's when the plants are turning greener, they absorb carbon dioxide. During the cold season, that carbon dioxide is back and released. But overall, globally, we add about 100 million tons of carbon, fossil carbon, every single day from the burning of fossil fuels. And we're seeing the result of that Numbers don't lie, and we're seeing the warmest years on record all occurring recently. The 10 hottest years have all occurred since 2010. That's a global temperature, and you can see the difference, the departure in temperatures since the early industrial era as we have now had increasing carbon dioxide. It was about 310 parts per million when I was born in 1957. It's approaching 420 parts per million now. And those emissions mean warmer temperatures. Not all the time, but on average. As a matter of fact, we're looking without significant cuts in carbon emissions, Denver's climate will warm to be more like Amarillo, Texas by 2060, more like northern Mexico by 2100. Imagine that. We have 100 degree days most often in our summertime, but we'll see a lot more of them. We'll see a lot more fire weather too, because we'll see a dramatic increase in hot, dry, and windy days. And those are the conditions that influence extreme wildfire behavior. And we've been fairly lucky here, other parts of North America not seeing that, notably Canada and Hawaii, but the average number of hot, dry, windy days are increasing with climate change. And the western wildfires are frequently becoming more of a big problem. Average global temperatures have increased about two to two and a half degrees Fahrenheit in the last 70 years. And that coincides with the increase in carbon dioxide because each molecule of CO2 acts like a feather in a down comforter, trapping heat that would otherwise radiate or escape out into space. And with that, that causes the planet to establish a new planetary uh, balance of temperature. And you can see how the warming has changed globally. These red stripes indicating the global change change much, much warmer than it was for earlier generations. The generations now are going to really face the problems that we see. But it doesn't have to be that way. If we decrease the amount of CO2 released, we can lower the amount of warming. It's never too late to stop making something worse. You want to learn more about it? This is my book, the world's littlest book on climate. It's free. All you have to do is click that QR code to get a free download. 10 facts in 10 minutes about the impact of increasing carbon dioxide and our warming world. Hope you have a great September. Thanks for watching.